The train was transporting hazardous materials in 17 loaded tank cars and in three empty tank cars with residue. Eleven of the derailed tank cars contained hazardous materials, including five specification DOT-105 tank cars loaded with 115,580 gallons of stabilized vinyl chloride monomer, a liquefied compressed flammable gas. NTSB investigators determined the initial derailment damage included one breached DOT-111 tank car containing flammable liquid, butyl acrylate, and two breached DOT-111 tank cars containing combustible liquids, two ethyl hexyl acrylate and ethylene glycol monobutyl ether. These released materials became involved in the post-derailment fire. The derailment also resulted in the breach of six tank cars containing non-hazardous liquids, including propylene glycol, diethylene glycol, and petroleum lubricating oil, which also ignited. Additionally, post-derailment fires burned six other derailed hopper cars carrying polyethylene plastic pellets and polyvinyl chloride granular plastic, as well as three boxcars carrying other non-hazardous freight. The five vinyl chloride tank cars were exposed to pool fire conditions in the derailment pileup. This led to their pressure relief devices venting pressure and reclosing after normal pressure was restored within the tank cars. This is part of the normal functioning of a tank car's thermal protection system. All vapor released through the pressure relief devices ignited, as is typical in most derailment scenarios involving flammable materials where sources of ignition are present. On the early evening of Saturday, February 4, one vinyl chloride tank car forcefully released burning vapor over a 70-minute period. This was the last time any of the vinyl chloride tank cars vented material through their pressure relief devices. By the morning of February 5, Emergency responders had mitigated the fire, but the vinyl chloride tank cars continued to concern authorities because their pressure relief devices had stopped operating and the temperature had risen as measured on the tank car shell surfaces. Emergency response crews found valves and fittings were thermally damaged, making them unusable for unloading the tank cars. The incident commanders ultimately scheduled a controlled vent and burn of the five vinyl chloride tank cars, which they determined was their last available mitigation option to avoid the risk of catastrophic tank failures that could have propelled fractured tank parts into residential areas. To prepare for the vent and burn, incident commanders expanded the evacuation zone to a one-mile by two-mile area. Crews dug pits to contain released vinyl chloride liquid while it vaporized and burned. On Monday, February 6, about 4.37 p.m., incident commanders initiated the vent and burn operation with tank car breaching explosive charges. The released vinyl chloride burned throughout the night of February 6. Wreckage clearing began on Tuesday, February 7, Residual fires were extinguished by noon on February 8.